Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this video we're going to look at Erickson's stages of psychosocial development. Erickson believed that personality in human beings develops in a predetermined order through eight stages of psychosocial development from infancy to adulthood. Now the word psychosocial is actually a combination of psycho which in this context means the psychological needs of the individual and social meaning the conflicting needs of the society. Erickson saw that each stage of development presents its own unique challenges which he called crises. Successful completion of each stage results in the acquisition of what he calls basic virtues which are basically strengths which the human ego can then use to resolve subsequent crises. Erickson essentially stressed the importance of social interactions in the development of human ego. Now let's look at these eight stages in brief. Uh, stage one to eight starting from trust v mistrust, autonomy v shame, all leading all the way to ego integrity versus despair. Now let's look at each stage individually. Trust versus mistrust. The infant at this stage uh, faces a dilemma, a basic concern relating to trust v mistrust. What does this mean? Now the infant is completely alien to the world around itself and it doesn't trust the world. So infants completely depend on their primary caregiver which can be the mother and infants essentially learn to trust the world around them by trusting this primary caregiver completely. So when there is a problem, when there is a need of the infant and he or she calls for help, will the primary caregiver be available? That's how trust is built. A successful completion in this stage results in the virtue of hope, which means Challenges will eventually result in positive outcomes in the mind of the infant. Now, inconsistent or unreliable care can actually lead to a lack of hope or withdrawal. Withdrawal can be very dangerous, obviously. Infants will not then have the confidence in the world around them and the unpredictabilities of the world. The second stage is autonomy versus shame. Toddlers struggle to gain a sense of autonomy or, or basically control of bodily functions, basic functions and small motor skills like walking, talking, uh, using the toilet, dressing up, feeding oneself, as you would understand. Increasingly, he or she would actually want to do these things without adult help but cannot a lot of the times and this leads to frustration for the child because the child actually wants to be an independent unit but can't but cannot do that and it's in this situation that a balance needs to be created by the parents when to offer help and when to try uh, and let the child do something on its own successful completion of this stage leads to the virtue of will now children need to be encouraged to be independent but at the same time be disciplined to a certain extent so it's always about a balance. Now the third stage is initiative versus guilt with the approximate age bracket of three to five years. The primary feature here involves the child regularly interacting with other children, parents of course, but with other children at school or in the neighborhood. So it's a mixed interaction stage. Children develop their interpersonal skills by planning activities making up games by initiating activities with others. Also, uh, the most important aspect of, aspect of this stage is that children begin to ask a lot of questions, questions about everything. And if the child's questions are treated as trivial, for instance, the child may develop feelings of guilt. And although some guilt is necessary, it's the right balance that will actually lead to the virtue of hope through this stage. The next stage is industry versus inferiority. Industry refers to being industrious or hardworking or competent. 
So that's what industry refers to here. It doesn't actually refer to a particular industry. It's that it's that aspect of being industrious. Children here learn to read and write, to do sums and mathematics, uh, and do do things on their own. Teachers play a very important role in this stage uh, in the child's life as they teach them specific skills. The child also learns to win recognition by by doing things right, by producing things. In this stage, study encouragement leads to the development of competence. So successful completion leads to competence and the lack of it leads to the development of inertia or a sense of inferiority in the child. So very important to actually again strike a balance. Identity versus role confusion the next stage 12 to 18 years. Adolescence lead to leads to bodily changes as we all know and it also leads to changes in expectations expectations with oneself and with the society around oneself adolescents search uh, for a sense of identity for a sense of self-identity through an exploration and interrogation of personal values beliefs and goals so this is that stage when you question your role in the society when you question society, when you question society's beliefs, when you question your your goals and if they match with those of the society, they want to fit in and start looking at their future in terms of careers, relationships, etc. Now, the conflict here for parents is how much freedom to actually grant and how much control to assume because the person in question is now both a child and a and an adult at the same time. Success in this stage will lead to the virtue of uh, fidelity, which means committing oneself to others or accepting others despite ideological differences. So again, a very important stage of development. The next stage, which spans across 18 to 40 years roughly, is intimacy versus isolation. During this period, Adults explore relationships leading towards long-term commitments sometimes and these relationships are with someone other than a family member, someone of the same sex or the opposite sex, but someone not a family member. Now avoidance of intimacy or a fear of commitment in this stage can often lead to isolation, loneliness and in some cases also depression. Success in this stage, however, will lead to the virtue of love. Okay, so the next stage is generativity versus stagnation. So this is between the ages of 40 to 65. Middle-aged adults, as you'd now call them, uh, experience a need to create or nurture things that will outlast them. They don't think about the present anymore. They think about future generations. They want to create a positive change that will benefit other people in one way or the other and also leave their mark for generations to follow. And how do, how, how do people actually think about leaving this mark? Some, some, think, of, some think of it uh, in terms of raising children, being productive at work or being involved in community activities and social activities and organizations. They just want to give back to the society at this stage. Success in this stage leads to feelings of usefulness and accomplishment. The virtues here, the virtue here is care and a failure to, uh, in, this, in this stage results in a feeling of stagnation a feeling of being hollow, a feeling of being unproductive. The next stage is uh, happens after the age of 65. 65 till death. Ego integrity versus despair. So this is the final stage and individuals here tend to look back at their lives, uh, tend to scan through their achievements, failures, decisions uh, and the impact of these decisions. The outcome here basically depends on how we as individuals actually decide to perceive our journey in life. It doesn't always depend on the actual journey itself, but on how we actually perceive our journey. 
individuals that actually feel that their life was unproductive in one way or another uh, you know in terms of uh, an unsatisfied life or whatever whatever it might be can actually harbor feelings of guilt they can actually harbor feelings of uh, depression despair hopelessness and a lot of other things basically individuals at this th at this point in time look back and analyze their lives and a successful analysis of their lives if i put it the right way a successful analysis of their own life leads to the virtue of wisdom enabling a personal person to look back on their life with a sense of closure and satisfaction otherwise it leads to despair depression and all things negative so that is a brief look at uh, Ericsson's uh, stages uh, what are some of the debates that one can have with, uh, with this theory uh, and its and the context and the usefulness of the theory now I call these debates not criticisms because Ericsson actually projected his work to be a tool to think and not as a factual analysis it's it's just his observations and the most common debate that one can have against uh, Ericsson's uh, stages is that the stages are vague and subjective. There is no real explanation on how the outcome of one stage influences personality at a later stage. Again, human beings are complex, so the lack of achievement uh, of virtues in one stage will or you know, can have an impact at a much later stage. And there's no explanation or correlation of that in Ericsson's work. It does actually, it, it does still, uh, you know, hold to date as a as a valuable valuable conceptual framework for understanding human personality development. Nevertheless, it is a very important framework, and it gives us a good outline, uh, and it is actually relatable to a lot of us. A lot of people can actually relate. To these stages uh, relate these stages to themselves and their own lives and actually draw parallels between the two so it is important it is important to actually learn and understand it even to this day and age okay great that concludes uh, this uh, presentation video uh, hopefully it was helpful for you uh, and uh, as always keep liking uh, and uh, and uh, sharing this content and providing your valuable feedback on what you want covered next. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.